I know you love writing law firm memos. Yeah, right. Today on Zippy Point. I'm Brock Romanek and I'm a big fan of you. I remember clearly when I first saw my first law firm memo. I was moonlighting as an editor for two different publications, the MNA Lawyer published by the Glassers, old timers might remember them, and the Corporate Governance Advisor published by Aspen and Walter Kluwer. I'm still editor for that bi-monthly, it's over 20 years now. So it was a real pain to recruit folks to write articles for these two publications. You had to convince people who had often never written before that it would help their visibility. And there was only a handful of people that were regulars. People would understandably say, why should I engage in that non-billable activity? It was hard to argue with that. Then Sarbanes-Oxley hit in 2002 and the first law firms began writing memos, making them publicly available on the law firm websites. And we have not looked back. It made my job as editor so much easier because people would then were becoming attuned to write the kind of things that could be converted easily into articles for my publications. This was all before my time at the corporateconsult.net. So yes, there was a time when no law firm would dream of writing a memo for public consumption. Flash forward 20 years and most, lar most large firms do it routinely. Instead of slowing down, it just seems like the memos are proliferating. It was a crazy year with COVID last year and some firms were writing about it every single day. So here are my six arguments that most firms are wasting their time with these memos, at least the way they're writing them, if not altogether. One, it is not fun to do. I'll start with the most important. If you don't enjoy this kind of thing, don't do it. Life is short. Or if you enjoy doing it, but you're not getting the appropriate credit, just say no or get the system in your law firm to change so that you get the credit that you deserve. Two, it ain't billable. Not sure I need to say more, right? Life isn't all about the billables. Look at my wild pay what you can business model for Zippy Point, but still. Three, it doesn't build trust. This goes to my point of not giving appropriate credit to the people that deserve it. As a reader, if I can't clearly tell who just gave me this beautiful slice of research, it's just not that effective for the firm or for the folks that wrote the thing. Tell me if I'm wrong, I find that most people tend to hire people in this industry, not the law firm that employs the person. I want to hire someone I can trust. I want to hire someone that I like. The people I like are the ones that I trust. So I understand that many memos truly are joint ventures. A partner's review is critical to ensure that the memo isn't veering off course. But the reality is that when there are more than two to three names attached to a memo, my eyes gloss over the byline. So it's like no one wrote it. So pick the two people who contributed the most and stick those on the memo. Four, it doesn't tell a story. Most memos simply don't read like there's a human behind them. There's just no one to connect to. People just aren't writing these things in the right style, making them inviting, making them engrossing, making them human. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you felt when you first sat down to write the memo. Maybe you, your life's been through this crazy period and you just start off about how tired you feel. You know, give us a little sense of where you're at mentally. <laughs> Anyways, about how, how about how about how you felt when you first read the regulation that you're you're writing about instead of just parroting what the regulation says but not how you're feeling emotionally so try telling a tale like that to connect with the audience put yourself in their shoes do you like reading dry material five it is an effective marketing what's your track record how many clients have you garnered with your memos i know they're more of a retention vehicle but still Will your clients really leave you if you stop shoving paper at them? Six, everyone else is doing it. So I recently talked to my mom down in Florida and she said she wanted to get a reverse mortgage. I told her those were a scam. She argued everyone else is doing it. Exactly, mom. They're preying on old people. Let's face it, legal expertise is a commodity these days. You want to set yourself apart. Doing what everyone else is doing is not going to accomplish that. So do your content marketing completely different than the way others are. Consider other mediums like video, or at least tell stories, use another style in your memos. Good night, Detroit. Mm -hmm.